the only way I developed a respect for history is by making myself aware of the fact that I was not programmed to learn from it in a textbook format. Nassim Taleb. Here I'm going to go over a few of my highlights from Nassim Taleb's book Fooled by Randomness. In it, he seeks to defend science as a light beam across the noise of randomness and to attack the scientist when he strays from his course. Most disasters come from the fact that individual scientists do not have an innate understanding of standard error or a clue about critical thinking. End of quote. We are designed to recognize and seek patterns in everything that occurs in our daily lives. This may have been advantageous from an evolutionary standpoint. It might have helped us get to today, but the world as it is now is more chaotic than whatever the patterns we try to perceive. Randomness in events or in our surroundings is much more prevalent than we are aware. Our minds are not quite designed to understand how the world works, but rather to get out of trouble rapidly and have progeny." End of quote. This rationale makes sense when you put the survival of human species as a purpose central to life. When we look at the past, it is deterministic because we have only one observation of it. So events from the past are certain, that is, the probability of them is 100%. But as pointed out by Taleb, for most people, probability is about what may happen in the future, not events in the observed past. End of quote. Which, in my translation, means that inferring predictions about the future from past events may not be such a good idea. Rare events are always unexpected, otherwise they would not occur. End of quote. It is common that such rare events have more often than not something bad or negative attached to them. Think of market crashes, accidents, calamities, you being cheated, and so on. But would you think that it is possible to benefit from such rare events? Well, for that, I suggest reading Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder, which is another great book from the same author, and I might make a video about it in the future. Now, back to randomness. When the statistician looks at the data to test a given relationship, say to ferret out the correlation between the occurrences of a given event, like a political announcement, and stock market volatility, Odds are that the results can be taken seriously. But when one throws the computer at data, looking for just about any relationship, it is certain that spurious connection will emerge, such as the fate of the stock market being linked to the length of women's skirts. And just like the birthday coincidences, it will amaze people. End of quote. Now, that's a good illustration of being fooled by randomness. How would you protect your brain against it? Well, my suggestion is to become literate in statistics, mathematics, and human irrationality. Taleb recommends looking into the works of Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky. Their specialty was to uncover areas where human beings are not endowed with rational probabilistic thinking and optimal behavior under uncertainty. End of quote. Carl Sagan, an astronomer who promoted scientific thinking, looked at cure rates for people who visited Lourdes in France. Some claimed miraculous cures by simple contact with holy waters. Sagan found the interesting fact that of the total cancer patients who visited the place, the cure rate was, if anything, lower than the statistical one for spontaneous remissions. It was lower than the average for those who did not go to Lourdes. What happens in this example of randomness? Well, on one side you have the blessed few ones shouting out in all corners of earth that they have been healed, while the rest of the majority, all the cursed ones, perish in silence. It would be odd to hear the evening news about the masses who visited the place and weren't healed. That would be boring. 
Instead, the focus is always on those few ones, the outliers, which by statistical means are insignificant. And this is a form of survivorship bias, which I courteously invite you to explore yourself. I'm sure many of you don't like to hear this. It's easy to allow yourself to engage in magical thinking. It gives color, purpose, and meaning to your life, while the bland and unattractive and cold reality of statistics and random events can be repulsing. Yet, it's one of the few ways in which real scientific progress is made. Of course, you always have the privilege to decide between self-delusion and hard sciences. I want to end this video in a positive note, but which contradicts conventions. And that is that small can be a very sought after ambition. It is better to have a handful of enthusiastic advocates than hordes of people who appreciate your work. Better to be loved by a dozen than liked by the hundreds. This applies to the sales of books, the spread of ideas and success in general and runs counter to conventional logic. The information age is worsening this effect. End of quote. Reprocessing my highlights from this book, three years later, I realized that I have to reread it in its entirety because I suspect I will generate additional affirmative insight to the ones that I already have. Now, if you think that my depiction of Talabs' book resonates with you, I'd recommend you to pick it up and voraciously read it slowly. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you for watching.